Hello fellow collectors, I hope you're doing very well today. In this video I continue with my monthly series where I talk about the best films I watched in the preceding month. So far this year, June has been a month where I watched the most movies, so I had a good few to choose from. It's also the month where I watched the Christian Petzold box set that I got recently, which included four of his films. At least two of those would definitely have been featured in my list today, but I thought I would make a video dedicated to talking about his films in particular, so if you are interested in my thoughts on them, please do go check out that video, and I'll leave a link in the description down below. Well, without any further ado, let's get right into it and talk about the best films I watched in June. First up is Patterson a film from 2016 and directed by the brilliant Jim Jarmusch and starring Adam Driver and goal shifter Farhani. This one is stunningly beautiful and almost melodic in nature. We follow Adam Driver's character through a week in his life. He is a thoughtful bus driver, quiet and contemplative, and he's a poet. Living with his partner, played wonderfully by goal shifter Farhani, their chemistry together is so wonderful as they play these two artistic souls, entwined in their love for each other and I think their shared passion for creative expression. If you're familiar with the films of Jim Jarmusch, then you won't be surprised that this is a slow-paced and quiet affair. For me, I think Jamish is a master of the quiet and deliberate. He always gives you time to ease into the narrative and the characters without rushing or without taking too long. I think he's really an expert at pacing his films to perfection, for the most part at least, and Patterson is an excellent example of this. I saw this one originally years ago and I was a big fan of it at the time, so revisiting it I was so happy to find that if anything it has increased in my estimations. This is a film for artists and by an artist. It's one that brims with the creative joy in the midst of the mundane, and is grounded by the deep bond of love shown between the couple. Overall, a peaceful and serenely feeling film that will leave you feeling hopeful and satisfied. Then we have Taboo, or Taboo, A Story of the South Seas. This one is a silent film from 1931, directed by one of the all-time greats, F. W. Murnau, and starring Matahi and Anne Chevalier in the main roles, both of whom I believe I'm right in saying were locals and neither had acted before. I read about this one a while ago, though honestly so long I've forgotten where now, but nevertheless I've had my eye on getting it ever since, as it sounded incredibly interesting. And it's actually one of the cheaper Eureka releases, usually under or around £9, so if you are interested it certainly won't break the bank. It's a fairly simple story, set in the stunning Bora Bora, about a young man from a small village who falls in love with a chief's daughter who is unfortunately promised to another tribe, and so they escape and run away to be together. It's a story about risking your life for love, and it was incredibly moving. There were also some really interesting aspects to this one, as it's sort of a meeting of native traditions with the encroachment of the Western world, where we see through the couple's eyes the strange ideas and laws that Western culture was bringing to the area. I thought the performances were excellent, especially considering neither of the pair were actors, and perhaps that's in due to part to the great direction of Murnau himself. It was beautifully shot, and as I often find myself saying with silent films, so many incredible shots that I simply have no idea how they could possibly have achieved, especially in the early 30s. Some truly amazing work. The vistas are gorgeous, as it was shot on location in Bora Bora. Interestingly enough, Murnau also trained many of the locals to work as crew for the film in order to cut costs. It's also a solid restoration from Eureka, to my eyes at least, though perhaps one that could benefit from a 4K upgrade, as I think it would look even more astonishing. There's also a great quote in the booklet that's included with the Eureka release, which has an excerpt from Murnau writing to his mother where he says, I have been here a year and I don't want to be anywhere else. The thought of cities and all those people is repulsive to me. I want to be alone or with a few rare people. 
And well, that might just be one of the most relatable things I've ever read. But anyway, overall, this one was a wonderful watch that I thoroughly enjoyed. And whether you're a fan of silent cinema already, or whether you haven't dived in yet, I think this one is well worth your time. Then next, we have One Fine Morning. From 2022, and directed by Mia Hansen Love, and starring Leah Seydoux and Melville Popard, as well as Camille Leban Martin and Pascal Gregory, among a good few others. I caught this one on the Mubi streaming service, but it is absolutely one that I'll be picking up a physical copy of as soon as I get the chance. One Fine Morning is a story about a young widow in her 30s, now a single mother for her 8-year-old daughter, and her passionate affair with a married man called Clément. Interwoven in the story are the dramas of family dynamics, as well as dealing with relatives with failing health and the assorted gauntlet of trying to make sure that they are properly cared for. This one is a simply brilliant domestic drama and a slice of life melded together. We meet Sandra, played by Leah Sedu, at a moment in her life when it seems like there is not much to look forward to for her. But she finds hope and love, romance and excitement and reinvigoration in this new relationship with a man that she knew some years before. As is the case with most affairs, I would assume, this one does not of course continue smoothly, as you might expect, adding to the drama of her life. Leia Sedu is one of my favourite actors working today, and she gives an absolutely stellar performance, and as good as she is in the big blockbuster films, I think she really shines in these smaller productions where her acting can take centre stage. She really moved me with her performance, showing such pain and despair at moments, but also tenderly expressing love and caring in a range of contexts in this film. It was a simply wonderful watch, with shades of melancholy and a bittersweet. This was also my first film from Mia Handsome Love, and I liked it so much that I dived immediately into another two of hers in the following days. Bergman Island and Things to Come, both of which I thoroughly enjoyed as well, and I'll absolutely be continuing into the rest of her filmography as I get the chance to. If anyone is interested in checking out more of her films, then it's either her full filmography, or most of it anyway, currently streaming on Mubi at the moment. Up next is No Escape a film from 2015 directed by John Eric Dowdle and starring Owen Wilson, Lake Bell and Pierce Brosnan. I have here the Nova Media edition of it. I remember some years ago my sister telling me that she watched this film and it gave her nightmares. And whether she meant it to or not, I took that as a high recommendation and I was not disappointed. Clearly as you can see because I sought out this lovely edition of it much later on. It had been some years since I last watched it, but revisiting this one during June, I found that it had lost none of its vigour. It's about a family who is moving to a new country, and as they arrive, a city-wide riot slash revolution breaks out, which leaves them running for their lives. In a place where they don't speak the language, they don't know the city, they only know that if they get caught, they'll be mercilessly killed. This one is a non-stop thrill ride for all the 103 minutes. It's incredibly taut and tense, with plenty of moments of shock, of violence, of fear, as well as just a few moments where you just wipe the sweat from your forehead and give a much-needed exhale before the chase resumes. I really wish we got more films like this, as I think it's a fantastic example of a perfect type of thriller that we just don't really see anymore these days. It's a simple enough story, without too many huge effects or anything like that, just solid all round, and absolutely one that I'll revisit more in the future if I ever need to make sure that my heart is still capable of beating more than 150 beats per minute. Interestingly enough, I did read some reviews on Letterboxd, as it had a lower rating on there than I would have expected, and there is a good few people commenting on things like certain political overtones and racial overtones and that, that sort of thing, and just finding things to dislike about this film for those reasons, but honestly, I think just take this film for what it is. It's not trying to make some sort of statement, it's just not deep enough to. It's not exactly thought-provoking. 
It's just a mixture of genres, Stranger in a Strange Land and Thriller, which results in something fantastic in my opinion. Just a great one to turn off your brain, sit back and enjoy the ride. And then lastly we have Winchester 73, a film from 1950 and directed by Anthony Mann, starring James Stewart, Shelley Winters, Millard Mitchell and Stephen McNally, among a good few others. Now, for one reason or another, I find myself firmly in a western period at the moment, which started towards the end of June. I've no idea where the interest has come from, but I've been having a blast exploring more westerns, and some absolute classics that I had not seen before as well a few of which I'm sure will appear on my Best of July video, no doubt. Winchester 73 is definitely one of the best I've seen so far though. As I understand it, Anthony Mann and James Stewart paired up for five westerns in total, three of which I believe are on the 1001 movies list which will tell you how well they're perceived. This one is the story about a gun, as you might expect, called a Winchester 73 a one in a thousand rifle and highly sought after. We meet Lynn McAdams, played by James Stewart, in one of his more serious incarnations on screen, as he comes to a town to enter a shooting competition where this rifle is the prize. Now, on the summaries I'd read before I watched the film, they said that it follows the rifle as it changes hands and follows the different owners. Now this is true to a certain extent, but it definitely gave me very different expectations to what I actually saw. This isn't some Magnolia-like story where threads come together, or a Citizen Kane story where an object plays a part over decades, as the film is definitely set in a much more condensed time frame. What this one is, is a solidly tense story of revenge. There are some dark characters here, and close to the crescendo of the film, it throws out another unexpected piece at you, which really brought things to a powerful boil. It was an exciting and captivating ride that I thoroughly enjoyed my time with, certainly enough to seek out a Blu-ray of it, which, believe me, was not as easy a task as I thought it would be. I managed to get this release here, which, has, which was actually the last one in stock from Rare Waves, where I picked it up from. Also, if you've got a keen eye, you'll spot a young Tony Curtis in a small role in this film as well. And lastly, time for some honourable mentions, of which there are quite a lot due to it being such a film-heavy month for me. First is Eastern Promises, which was excellent to revisit. Then The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp by Paul and Pressburger, one that I think I need to watch at least once more before I can really summarise my thoughts on it. Then A Walk Among the Tombstones, which I feel is a very underrated film, very much a neo-noir that is incredibly dark, with a great performance by Liam Neeson, and one that I feel has been unfairly lumped in with his sort of action man string of films. Then we've got Torment by Claude Chabrol, which was a tough watch but riveting, and I feel like every month I have a Chabrol film in my honourable mentions, but one of these days I will include one to talk about a bit more deeply. And then Black Hawk Down, still an absolutely stunning watch. The Fountain by Darren Aronofsky. And lastly, A Western, Two Road Together, with James Stewart and Richard Widmark, directed by John Ford. And well, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope your June was a brilliant month for films, and I hope that your July has been wonderful so far as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.